I was shocked yesterday to see Mrs. Sobaseki, the first lady, saying that our candidate has no wife. She is the most, I, I'm sorry that she had to say that, because here is a woman who has no child. Between him and Obaseki, they have no child, they are childless. They are even not ready to adopt. I mean, I don't blame anybody who don't have a child. But people who have love for children, they go to motherless home and adopt children. They have not adopted. They are, they are both in their 60s. So you married with, I don't know whether it's a contract or whatever it is, but they have no child. Now, our candidate not only have children, he has invested in the education of those children such that you watch them on live television covered by your media stations where the first one that spoke is a lawyer, the second one is a medical doctor, and they address the crowd in a, in a do south, in a do cetera, in a do north, and their mother was there. As a human being, I believe what's most important is that we find a purpose. Everyone is structured on earth by God to actualize their purpose in life. And once we have that mindset and we seek that in life, and we are happy with our lives, and we know that we're moving on in actualizing God's purpose for our lives, in bringing glory to God in the way we live our lives. It wouldn't matter if scathing remarks uh, are, are flung at you. I would like to say to every woman, I call you all sisters, if you feel hurt by whatever you heard, I haven't paid much attention to it. My word of comfort to you would be this. Um, in addition to what I just told you about seeking God's face, the seeking God's purpose, and being, finding fulfillment therein. I would say to you, those of you who, those of you sisters, who, like myself, had conceived and had miscarriages. I would also say to you, sisters, who again, like myself, had had painful evacuations of our babies who had died in our wombs. I had suffered one such misfortune. I would also like to say to you out there who had lost, conceived and birthed babies who died perhaps at birth or at different stages in life, who, all of you, including ourselves, who had conceived, miscarried, had evacuations, who, as we speak today, do not have children to show for the trauma and the pain that we have we've experienced in life. My word to you, word of comfort to you, as I say to myself, you are not barren, okay? You are not barren. So don't be hurt if anyone calls you that, or anyone calls a fellow woman that. You are not far. I dare to call you fruitful. And I said to you, like I said to myself, you and I, we are potential, budding, prospective, proud mothers of lively children. The children will come in God's time. So hang in there, hold your head up high, you are not barren. Enjoy the life that God has given you in the meantime. Thank God for what you have, thank God for a loving spouse like I have. I say that I have the best husband in the world. Thank God for the love of family, friends, and all support systems that God has given to you. Enjoy the life He's given to you. 
find your purpose, face it, and take your mind off these things. And before you know it, it will happen. I um, have learned that um, some, sometimes some, some people who are meant or called to pay the price for some others. It strikes me that perhaps this is what's happening here with me. And I've embraced it, embraced, embraced the, 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 the call to pay the price on your behalf to ensure that no man or woman ever calls you back in this land. Is it the influence by the political cabal who already know the end products of the campaign of the election? What year? I'll be there. 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 I